course, because there's nobody who does know. But I know when I did uh, some things for uh, Stanford Urology, they had a, a group of people, as people have always done and will do, dying of their prostate cancer. And uh, one of them was a very major uh, person who played a huge role at Stanford and had been treated for about 15 years for uh, uh, prostate cancer. Nothing really killed it. It had it at bay several times, and there were a bunch of um, people in the department felt really responsible because all of a sudden <coughs> what they had put forward all of a sudden wasn't available anymore, and they couldn't uh, work with it. And they, uh, they called me and said, do you think you could keep these, there was only two, maybe three, exceptional Stanford people alive? We think we're going to get more of the, uh, of the vitamin D analogs that are being developed for prostate cancer, developed at the University of Oregon, but it won't be for six months. Can you do something? And I said, well, I can certainly try. And, they, and I said, why me? I mean, you know, you've got a lot of people. And they said, well, you know how to handle vitamin D. You've done it in all doses for a long period of time. And I said, I bet you have some people at Stanford. No, we don't. We don't have anybody that's working on D. I said, off we go. And what happened was I immediately put uh, these guys on 50,000 units of vitamin D. Um, uh, it was, was very interesting. They were all in a place where they had all the uh, uh, metastases in bones everywhere. They were aching and every other thing was wrong, and uh, yet this was something that was going to help them. And uh, the two of the three um, said, you know, I don't know. I don't know. This is too much, and I don't think it's going to help. And I said, well, we haven't, we haven't even offered it to you yet. And he said, no, I don't think I want to do it. So they went home and died in a week. This other guy, who was really an amazing guy all by himself, said, let's go. And so we started on 50,000 units a day, and I said, we're just going to do that. We're going to come in every week. We're going to measure your vitamin D. We're going to measure your PSA. We're going to watch how well you do. And he started off. <clears throat> and what we would see is, as you would uh, guess, uh, the vitamin D levels went up until he was about 1,200. Most of the time, if it's over 100, ordinary people are, you know, concerned. I don't want it less than 200 when you're uh, having a cancer we're working on. <clears throat> but I love it when it would go over 1,000. And uh, his, he got his value of his uh, PSA and his vitamin D on the same day, and it was Christmas Eve. And he picks it up. I, you know, I make he, sure he gets copies of everything. And he picked it up on New Year's Eve and looked at it, and his PSA was up to now about 1,000 also. And he said, I'm going to die from toxicity of D, and I'm probably going to die of, of prostate cancer. And he called me on his cell phone immediately and said, I'm dying. I said, what's wrong? He said, well, look at the lab. Have you seen my lab? I said, yeah. Well, why are you dying? He said, well, look at the values. No, no, no. Do you feel like you're dying? Well, no. And I said, well, what do you want to do? Want to stop everything? No. You still think you're dying? Well, I don't know. Those are high. What do you think I should do? <laughs> Keep it up, fella. And when he got his next one next month, the PSA was cut in half. The D had dropped in half. There's a huge lesson there. I'm not sure I know it, but I do know that when the D hasn't a job to do, it will start to fall. And that's why I've never seen toxicity of vitamin D. Not my skill, it's the D's art. And I think that within the framework of these kinds of things, we're going to see amazing things throughout all the other cancers. And as I mentioned, we're seeing even melanoma look better too. So it works a little bit almost like the body's natural way of producing white blood cells coming to the rescue when there's a problem, but we're having to administer the D additionally because the only other way than sunbathing in the nude for 30 minutes on either side at midday every day that we can get adequate D is through a supplementation. How, tell us the differences between D uh, ways of taking vitamin D 
uh, capsules, chewables, or spray, or different types of sprays from your experiences to their efficacy? Well, they're all the same, but there are advantages in everyone. Uh, I used 50,000 units of vitamin D the first time I was, the first morning, the first patient, the first hour I was becoming an endocrinologist. And I said to my mentor, I said, um, I think this woman, 67 years old, is severely lacking in vitamin D, has osteomalacia, which is adult rickets, and I think she should be on vitamin D. And he said, what dose? I said, well, I've never, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't, I've never given vitamin D to anybody. He says, 50,000 units is the only dose. Now, if you want to go back the rest of the morning, we can tell you all the ways the D levels have been uh, talked about up and down throughout nations since the early uh, 1920s. And it's been something that has not been run well by various uh, countries. Finland being the worst example of that, who uh, as a comp country took out all of vitamin D from the population. And diabetes in all the newborn people increased 80% over the next 10 years. Every uh, uh, eight out of 10 people born were going to get either type one or type two, and mostly type one. And the world made fun of them, but they were all terrified, saying, what on earth are they doing in Finland? Well, what if we're doing it? We don't even know it yet. And it was just a terrible thing. And it was that some bureaucrat said, let's save some money. They never identified who it was, when it happened, or whatever. But you could go out, do a, a graph that said, look at it go up. And now, and this is two years later after they found that out, now the incidence is just like the rest of the world. It is just 2 3% in the, in the group, group that are in there. So this is a real major uh, uh, way that uh, the vitamin D has played a huge role in everything else uh, that we have done within this. And so uh, as we go through all the other ways that vitamin D is given, we wanted to be able to say, you know, we know it has to be in some place used, utilized. And the next question is, how much? Finland's saying a lot. Canada's saying uh, a lot. The United States is, we'll think about it. And it's, it's a terrible thing because, for example, um, when the pregnant women in uh, Canada they have a terrible problem with all the, uh, the uh, Inuit, Indians, you know, way up around the Arctic Circle, not getting any D to speak of unless they get a good seal with a big fat liver that has a lot of D in it. Uh, this is, they're very, very uh, low in D, and they have a birth rate of problems uh, secondary to uh, infection, not infection, but uh, birth changes in 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 these little kids that is just birth, terrible. Birth All effects. beef that they've got uh, musculoskeletal things, they've got cerebral things, they've got everything that goes on. Birth defects are external things, but there's a lot of other things they talk about internally. And so when you when you have that uh, going on, and you all of a sudden put the, the daily amount of vitamin D somebody gets in Canada uh, into the system and making sure they all get it, and you finally see the uh, birth defects as we see it, and probably the rest as well that don't manifest later, till later, uh, drop to 1% from 10%. Oh my God. Uh, first of all, that's billions for an economy. Secondly, whoo, is that one big change for people in the community who have things like this. And so uh, nothing is being done in the United States in this. So here I sit around uh, throwing my vitamin D 50,000 units around. There's still got about 5,000 people taking that every day and loving it. Uh, but I said there's something more important about doing something faster in a lot of situations. So. I had done uh, research at UCSF some time ago, and then we really moved forward and said uh, we needed to give a lot of vitamin D because people were dying of lack of vitamin D, and let's do it some other way. And we do shots. We did intravenous tubes running down the nose. Nothing worked. Spray did. 
and a friend of mine went on to Colorado and found that if we sprayed it, the cheek mucosa would pick it up, the roof of the mouth, under the tongue, and you just need to aim at the tongue. You didn't need to do anything, and this is all FDA approved and shown that in about seven days, you got a level between 100 and 200. Oh, that's really therapeutic. It's fast acting. It's going to be great, and we've been so pleased. I'm Nothing gonna, wrong with the pills. I, I wanted to ask you, because when you spray it, you think that eight sprays is 5,000 units, but is it because it has the effect of 50,000 units by taking the eight sprays? That, that's right, and that's part of the speed as well as how much you get, because uh, 50,000, when you swallow, 1% uh, is only absorbed. The rest is destroyed in the GI process. Oh, so you're only getting 1%. Well, that's the biggest reason. Plus, it's not as fast. You've got to wait 200 days to it to get to its saturation point before it starts down. You know you have to have something faster than that in most situations. If you're just doing it to prevent breast cancer, I can tell you tons of stories about how that's prevented. And so this is a, a major uh, way to prevent some of one of our worst scourges that really ruins lives forever. Thank